Hi, I'm covering section 2.6 today on the graph of basic functions. So, so far uh, in sections, well, in section one, three, I went over the definition of a function, uh, the definition, the notation, and uh, the fundamentals of functions. Uh, sections two, four, and two, five. On two, four, and two, five, we focused on linear functions. And now we're going to, uh, uh, I'm going to give you a list of seven basic functions. Okay, we need the idea of what a continuous function is. This is a very informal definition of when a function is continuous, but a function is continuous over an interval of its domain. If it's hand-drawn graph over that interval can be sketched without lifting the pencil from the paper. So let's take a look at one example. So if you can draw the graph without lifting the pencil, the function is uh, continuous. That's a very intuitive definition. If you take calculus later on, you will see the, the formal definition of a continuous function. Okay, so I'm going over this example. I'm doing number 14. They are asking you to determine the intervals of the domain over which each function is continuous. So that's number 14 on page 256. You can see the graph of the function. So the domain of this function from the graph, we can see that the domain is going to be negative infinity to zero, including zero. So we write a bracket to indicate that we are including zero and the number fifth. So that's the domain and the function is continuous on its entire domain. And it is also continuous. over its entire domain, negative infinity through zero. Number 15, they give you another graph. Okay, so you have the graph of this function and observe something that whenever you have an open dot, that means, means that that point is not, part of the, is not part of the graph. So here you have an open dot. Which means that the point three comma one is not part of the, is not part of the graph. So the point, Three comma one is not part of the graph. So the domain is going to be everything but three. And the function is continuous over. So the graph breaks at uh, three comma one. So the function uh, is continuous over negative infinity, three, union three to infinity. Or they are asking, are they are asking you for the interval, so we're just going to write, um, it's continuous over this, over negative, negative uh, infinity to three and three to infinity. So it is also said that the point that the function has a point of discontinuity at three.
at, uh, uh, at x equals 3. OK, so we are going to uh, the title of this section is graphs of uh, basic functions. That's what we're doing next. OK, so we will consider seven basic functions. The first basic function is the identity function. So number one, the identity function is defined as f of x equals x. So that's the identity because uh, because x and y values are equal. So if you try to um, graph the function by point plotting, if f of x equals x, the x and the y values are the same. So f of negative 2 is negative 2. f of negative 1 is negative 1. f of 0 is 0. f of 1 is 1. And f of 2 is 2. And the graph. It's going to be a line. At this point, you may know that the graph was, is going to be a line with slope 0 and y-intercept 0, 0, or a straight line with slope 1 passing through the origin. OK, so we're drawing the graph by point plotting. Um, the domain of this function is all real numbers. So the domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range is also negative infinity to infinity. Uh, the function is increasing on its entire domain. Remember that a function is increasing if the graph is rising from left to right. So uh, f is increasing. Over its entire domain. That is negative infinity to infinity. And it is continuous also over its entire domain. So f is increasing over, over its entire domain, and it is also uh, continuous over its entire domain. The domain is also negative infinity to infinity. OK, so that's the first basic function. The second basic function is the squaring function or the quadratic function. OK, so we did number one. Number two, we have a total of seven basic functions. And the second basic function is the squaring function. Define as f of x equals x squared. So if we graph the, if we um, draw the graph by point plotting, Every y value is the square of uh, is the square of uh, x. So negative two squared is negative two times negative two, which is four. 
Negative one squared is negative one times negative one, which is one. Zero squared is zero. One squared is one times one. And two squared is two times two. So we are going to draw the graph. So this goes through the point negative two, four, negative one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and two, four. So at zero, 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 the point zero, zero is known as, as the vertex. And um, the graph is changing from decreasing to increasing. The domain of the squaring function is going to be all real numbers, but the range is the set of y values. So the y values will be zero and everything above zero. So that's zero with a bracket because zero is part of the range to infinity. This function is increasing, or let's start with decreasing, over negative infinity to zero. So we're, we're going to write the intervals where the function is over which the function is increasing or decreasing. They are going to ask you for the open intervals. We're going to keep everything within parentheses. That's decreasing over negative infinity to zero and increasing over zero to infinity. You look at the assignments, uh, they are asking you for the open intervals. So that's increasing. Over zero to infinity. Uh, with a parenthesis, we're looking for the open intervals. And it is continuous over its entire domain. So it's continuous over its entire domain. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so that's number two. We have five more, five more to go. And I just want to show you what, uh, what, what we have done so far. Okay, so we did the identity function. We did the graph, the domain and range. The fact that the identity function is increasing and continuous on its entire domain. And we did the squaring function. So when we write the intervals over which the function is increasing or decreasing, we always write parentheses. Okay, third function, third basic function is the cubing function. The cubing function is going to be f of x equals x raised to the third power. OK, so negative 2 cubed is going to be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. We have zero, zero, we have one, one, and two, uh, two times two times two is eight. So we have the points. We're going to sketch the graph. Okay, 
So we are going to plot those five points. Okay. So it passed through the points negative two eight, negative one, uh, sorry, negative two, negative eight, negative one, negative ne uh, negative one, negative one, zero zero, one one, and two eight. So this is what the graph will look like. It uh, it is increasing. So it is increasing. But as it approaches zero or as it approaches the origin, the graph levels off, but it never stops increasing. Levels off and then keeps increasing at a faster rate again. The domain of this function is all, the domain and range are all are both all ring numbers. Uh, also, the function is uh, increasing on its entire domain. So I'm going to write them together. Okay, it is increasing on its entire domain. And it is also uh, continuous on its entire domain. That is negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so that was number three. Uh, number four, the next basic function, we have a total of seven, is the square root function. The square root function, the equation is f of x equals square root of x. Until now, the x values we have been choosing have been uh, negative 1, negative 2, or negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now we want the range values to be real numbers. So, uh, we cannot let x be negative. Otherwise, square root of a negative number will be a complex number, and that's something we cannot plot on the coordinate system. We're going to start with 0. The square root of 0 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2 is not an integer, neither is, neither is the square root of 3. So the next x value is going to be square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. And if you, if you want to include one more, it's going to be 9, 3. So the square root of 5, 6, 7, or 8 are not going to be integers. We're choosing the points. So the coordinates are integers. Something that is easy to graph. Okay, so this graph passes through 0, 0, 1, 1, and 9, 3. The domain of this function, the domain and range, are uh, 0 to infinity, including 0. 
So the domain is zero to infinity, including zero, and the range is also zero to infinity. Uh, the function is uh, increasing over its entire domain. And it is also uh, continuous over its entire domain. And the entire domain are both zero to infinity. Actually, the, bo uh, the book is just um, for increasing. They are also doing uh, open intervals, so we're going to do that. So we're going to keep that, but this is increasing over. I'm not going to write it like that. I'm just going to keep it increasing over zero to infinity, excluding zero. And it is continuous over its entire domain, zero to infinity. Yeah, for increasing or decreasing, they never include the end values. They just do open intervals. Like this is the one. So I did the next one. So that's the one I did. And it says it increases on the open intervals, zero to infinity. So they only do open intervals. So that was number four. Number five. is the cube root function. The cube root function is f of x equals x cubed. Okay, so we're going to choose the x values, so the y values are integers. We did the, the cubing function. We learned that, so the, so the cube root function is actually a cube root of x. So the, the cubing function already did that. This is the cube root of x. And we're choosing the, uh, the x values, so the cube root is, um, is an integer. So the cube root of zero is zero. The cube root of one is one. Um, two times two times two is eight. So eight, the, cube, the cube root of eight is two. Then negative one times negative one times negative one is negative one. That means the cube root of negative one is negative one. And negative two multiplied by itself three times is negative eight. So the cube root of negative eight is negative two. So if we compare this to the cubing function. Okay, so we have the x values up to negative eight and eight. So that's six, seven, eight, and then in the other direction. Okay, so we're going to um, we're going to draw the graph of this function. And uh, y values, we have them from negative two to two. So that was was uh, that was negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Some of these points are uh, negative eight, negative two, negative one, negative one. 0, 0, 1, 1, and A2. So 
So that's the graph. Okay, so in the other direct, uh, uh, when we did the cube, the cubing function, at the graph approach, approach the origin, it leveled off, and then continued, uh, continued to grow at a fast rate again. This one is kind of the opposite. It's growing slow. So actually, as it moves away from the origin, it looks flatter. And as it approaches the origin, it's growing at a faster rate. So it's starting to grow fast. And then as it moves away from the origin, the graph looks flatter or not as steep as before. Uh, the domain and range, and let's compare to what the book has. So we did that. We did, um, actually, I, I, I just passed it. Yeah, so that's the cube root function. That, that's what the graph looks like. The domain and range are both all real numbers. So the cube root of any real number is a real number. The domain is negative infinity to infinity, and the range is also negative infinity to infinity. This function is um, increasing on its entire domain, zero to infinity, and it is. Uh, Increasing also, it is continuous and increasing on its entire domain. So let's start with continuous. On its entire domain. And it is uh, increasing on its entire domain. So that's increasing on negative infinity to infinity. And increasing on negative infinity to infinity. OK, so so far, we have two more. Number six is the absolute value function. The, value fun the absolute value function is written as uh, f of x equals the absolute value of x. And you can define this as a piecewise defined function. The absolute value of x is uh, x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and the opposite of x if x is negative. So we're back to the, um, to the x values negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The absolute value is 0. The absolute value of 1 is 1. And the absolute value of 2 is 2. Okay, we're going to draw the graph. So the graph passes through the points negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. So it has this, uh, it has this corner, it has this corner here, this, uh, this sharp corner. Okay, the characteristics are the domain is all real numbers, but the range is similar to the to the squaring function. It's just zero to infinity. <clears throat> so the domain is all real numbers. The range 
is a set of non-negative numbers or zero to infinity, including zero. This function is uh, decreasing. So this behaves like the squaring, like the squaring function. This is decreasing. over, um, so I'm going to do this. This is decreasing over negative infinity to zero. Decreasing and decreasing are always written with, uh, with parentheses, and it is uh, increasing over zero to infinity. And the function is continuous on its entire domain. On its entire over its entire domain, negative infinity to infinity. Okay, and the last basic function is the uh, the greatest integer function. <clears throat> Plus number seven, the greatest integer function. So this is written with other brackets. Actually, I'm just going to type this one. I can type it. The greatest integer function is written with, double, with double bracket. So, so that's x within double bracket. And I'm going, to the, I'm going to copy the definition for you. Okay, the greatest integer function uh, pairs every real number x with the greatest integer less than or equal to x. For example, at 9.3, the greatest integer less than or equal to 9.3 is going to be nine. The greatest integer less than or equal to seven is seven. The greatest integer less than or equal to pi is three. And the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 5.2 is negative six. Okay, so we want to know what the graph looks like. That's also going to be, you can also write this as a piecewise defined function. And for, for x or for x greater than or equal to two and less than negative one, the value of x is going to be negative two for any of those values. For x between negative one or x greater than or equal to negative one and less than zero, the value of x is negative one. If x is greater than or equal to zero and less than one, the value of x is zero. Um, for x 
greater than or equal to one and less than two, the value of x is one. And one more, if x is between two or if x is greater than or equal to two and less than three, the function at x is Okay, so let's do the graph. Okay, we're choosing the x values from a negative two to negative one, from, from negative two to three. and uh, y values from negative two to two. Okay, we're going to have a, a closed dot at the left end value and an open dot at the right end value. Between negative two and negative one, the value of f is negative two. So that's going to be Negative two, two, including it, but excluding negative one, zero. At negative one, it's going to jump from negative one, negative one, up to negative one. So the open dot means that the value is not included. The closed dot means that the, val that the point is included. Then between uh, zero and one is zero. Including the, le including the left end point, excluding the right end point. And you can see the pattern now. So the next one would be from three to four. You would have another one like this. And so on. Okay, the domain of this function It's all real numbers. You can plug in any any x value, and uh, you are going to get a y value. But the range is going to be the set of integers. So the range. Is a set of integers. So that's going to be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and so on. So this function is constant on the open intervals. Let's write this here, uh, f of x is constant on the open intervals. Um, we don't have an initial interval, but that's uh, negative two, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, two, and so on, two, three, and so on. And this function uh, is discontinuous. It's discontinuous at this set of values. So it's going to, at every integer, the y value is going to jump. So that's negative three, negative two, Negative one, zero, not negative zero, zero, one, two, three, and so on. Okay, so that's the list of, of the seven basic functions. And actually the last one 
we're not going to see until uh, after this after this section, we're not going to work with the greatest integer function, but we're going to work with the other six. So we're going to so we're going to continue working with the other six, not the seven one. And now that we did the the seven basic functions, the last part of this section is piecewise defined functions. So we already did two of those. Uh, the functions, that is the absolute value function and the greatest integer function are examples of piecewise defined functions. And a, piece function, and a piecewise defined function is defined by pieces or by different definitions over its domain. So if I cannot copy this, I'm just going to type it. Yeah, it doesn't let me copy this. So a piecewise defined function um, is defined by different rules over different intervals of its domain. So we're going to see the first example. We're going to graph the function. Now, does a piece does another piecewise defined function? Um, two x plus three. If x is less than or equal to one, and uh, minus x plus four, if x is greater than one. Okay, so this piecewise defined function con consists of two line segments. Uh, we know that two x plus three, the graph two x plus three, the graph of y equals two x plus three is a straight line, and the graph of minus x plus four is, is another straight line. Not only that, we we know things about this. We know things like the slope and the y-intercept. So we know how this goes. And the point where the graph changes is one. So that value is going to be important. Okay, so um, if x is less than or equal to one, we can see that the y-intercept is three and the slope is two. So run, run one, rise one. One back, two down. One back, two down, and so on. So we have this piece. And we have a less than or equal to, um, less than or equal to negative one. So this one is going to have an open dot. So a closed dot, it's a closed dot. Um, negative one plus four is three. So it's going to have a closed dot at one comma three. So that one has a closed dot. So that's a line segment with slope negative one. So run one, 
for one, wrong one for one, wrong one for one, and so on. And that's it. So that uh, that's the graph, and this function is is discontinuous. You can see that the graph breaks at uh, at one. So f has a discontinuity at x equals one. So I'm doing one example of a piecewise defined function that is continuous. We will graph. The piecewise defined function f of x. equals 2x minus 3 if x is less than 2 and x squared minus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do now. This is not as nice as the previous one because the uh, the pieces are not don't look like linear functions. But let's do that. I'm going to make a table with three columns, with the x value, with the value of two x minus three, and the value of x squared minus three. Okay, so the um, the x value where the function changes is two. So I'm going to take two values, uh, two values on the left and two values on the right. So zero is less than two. Two times zero, let's see. Um, yeah, if uh, if x is less than two. Uh, 2 times 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 2 times 1 minus 3 is negative 1. And 2 times 2 minus 3, 2 times 2 minus 3 is um, 1. And I'm including this one, or I, I, can, I can write this with red. Just to let you know that this is not part. So if the function breaks, that's going to be an open dot. And then at two, it changes. Two squared minus three is uh, four minus three, so that's one. Uh, three squared minus three is six. And four squared minus three, that's 16 minus three, that's 13. And finally, we're going to graph, we're going to draw the graph of this function. So we have the y values up to 13. So that's up to 13. And I'm just going to indicate the important values. We have 13, we have uh, 6, uh, 1, and then we have negative 1 and negative 3. And x values up to four, from zero to four. Okay, so some of the points are zero, negative three, one, negative one, and a two, one, with an open dot for now. So this one looks like a straight line. 
but then dot is going to close because um, two one is actually part of the graph. So that's two one, three six, and four thirteen. So that's going to look like a parabola. This piece. Okay. Yes, yeah, I see what's happening. Yeah. So that's three six and four thirteen. Yeah. So this this piece is going to look more like a parabola. So this function is continuous over ne on negative infinity to infinity. Uh, at the end, uh, the function didn't break. It changed. Uh, it changed rules, but it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't break. The graph didn't break. So that's continuous on negative infinity to infinity. So I'll finish the section with two applications. One, um, so these two are applications of the greatest integer function. We're doing number 46 on page 257. We are going to graph the function and give the domain a range. And the function is a variation of, of the greatest integer function. And I have a little typo here above. That's not if, that's off. Okay, so number 46. We have the greatest integer function or the greatest integer of 2x minus 1. So let's say that we start at x equals two. If x is two, or if x is negative two, this is going to be a negative two times two is negative four, negative four minus one is negative five. So that's going to be negative five, that's an integer. If x is negative 1.5, uh, 2 times negative 1.5 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. OK, so it changed. It jumped from negative 2 to negative 1.5, but we didn't know what happened in between. We're going to take another point, negative 1.75. So negative 1.75 times 2 is negative 3.5. Negative 3.5 minus 1 is negative 4.5. So that's a point. And this is negative 5. OK, so we're going to continue with this pattern. Rather than increasing by 1 half, we're going to be increasing by, by, 0 0.5, by 0 0.25. OK, so that's uh, negative 1 to 1.25. That's negative 2.5. Minus 1 is negative 3.5. So that's also negative four, and, and so on. OK, so negative, negative 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And the value at negative 3 is going to be itself. So uh, you can see, hopefully, you can see the pattern. We continue in this manner. A negative 0 0.75. The value is going to be 
uh, if it's going to be negative three as well. A negative one half is going to be negative two. A negative one fourth is also negative two. At zero is negative one. At one fourth is also negative one. And I'm going to do three more. So we can see the pattern. You see the pattern on the table uh, at one half. Now that's going to be zero. At one four, uh, at uh, three fourths is also zero. And at one is going to be one. And let's do the graph. So I'm trying to draw on this tablet. Okay, so we have X values from negative two. We did this from negative two. So let's do this up to two. And one Y values from negative five, we got this up to, um, well, we did this up to one, but let's see. And then we have this values in between. Okay, from negative two, to negative 1.5 is going to be negative four, and it's going to be negative five. So we have close dot, open dot, then close dot, open dot. Uh, what else do we have? We have another close dot, and then from uh, negative one half to, um, Let's see, from negative, from negative, yeah, from negative one half to zero, it's negative two. Okay, so that's, that should be good enough to observe the pattern. Okay, so that's the graph and I'll do a, a, vari a little variation or something that looks like the like the greatest integer function, that's number 47. That's on the next page. Okay, number 47 on the next page. Now, the good thing is, is that on the homework, you have a multiple choice for this type of problem for the greatest integer function. So that's on page 258. Assume that the postage rates are 49 cents for the first ounce and uh, 21 plus 21 cents for each additional ounce. And that each letter carries a 49 cent stamp and as many 21 cent stamps as necessary. Graph the function that models the number of stamps on a letter weighting x, out, x ounces over the interval 0, 0,5. Okay, so we have the graph where x will represent the weight in ounces. from zero to five, excluding zero because you're never have, you're, you're never going to send a letter that has no weight and the number of stamps. So grab the function that models the number of stamps on a letter, so be careful with that. So number of stamps, so that's also uh, up to five. 
the weight actually is not is not involved in the graph, but this represents the number of stems. Okay, so the post-touch rates are 49 cents for the first ounce. And each letter, uh, each letter carries one uh, 49 cent stamp. So obviously there's no letter, there's not going to be a letter with no weight. So up to one ounce, it requires one stamp. Um, if it weighs more than one ounce, but no more than two, uh, it requires two stamps. If it weighs more than two, but no more than three. So the only difference with the, uh, the only difference is that the open dot is on the left and not on the right. So that's technically not not the, the greatest integer function. And then more than three, but no more than four. And more than five, uh, more than four, but no more than five. So that's going to be the graph. And one more example is going to be uh, another piecewise defined function. Number 51. So I'll copy the statement. And the graph. Okay, the new market. Um, so that's well that that's on the same page, that's page. 258 or the next page. The new vehicle market share in percent in the US for trucks is shown in the graph. If X represents 2000, X equals R represents 2008 and so on, we can see the percent in the truck market share that's increasing as a piecewise defined function where the pieces are line segments. Uh, there are two questions somewhere. We are going to use the points on the graph to write equations for the graphs in the interval 0, 8 and 8, 13. So first, we're going to find the slope of the line passing through the first set of points. And good thing we already know the y-intercept. Find the slope of the line segment passing through the points. The points are 0, 34.2 and 8, 49.8. Okay, we already know the y-intercept. The y-intercept is already there. So let's find the slope. The slope is what? This 49.8 minus 34.2 over 8 minus 0. This is 15.6 over 8 
or 1.95. The graph or the equation for this line is 1.95x plus 34.2. And we're going to do the same for the other line. So we're going to find the slope. <clears throat> or find, actually find uh, the equation of the line passing through. Eight forty nine point eight and thirteen fifty two point two. The slope is going to be um fifty two point two minus 49.8 over 30 minus 8. So that's 3.4. Um, this is 2.4 over 5, or 0 0.4, 0 0.48. Uh, so, so far, we have that the equation of this line is y equals 0 0.48x plus b. Uh, use one of the points to find b. Let's say uh, we plug in uh, 8, 49.8, so 0 0.48 times 8 plus b equals 49.8. And b is going to be equal to 49.8 minus 0 0.48 times 8. That is going to be equal to 45.96. Okay, so we have the equation of the other line. And finally, the piecewise defined function. It's going to be. Okay, so that's going to be the first line. That's for um, for x greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to eight. So that is 1.95x plus 34.2. X is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to eight. And it's going to be 0 0.48 X plus 45.96. Okay, that's 0 0.48 X plus 45.96. If X is greater than eight and less than or equal to 13. So this is it. Thank you for listening. <clears throat>